Tom Allen remains adamant that the Hoosiers have a quarterback battle on their hands this fall camp. Is that really the case, or are the Hoosiers doing a bit of posturing? You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday, everybody. You are Locked on Hoosiers, the one and only daily IU podcast. We are part of the Locked on Network, your team every day. Appreciate you guys tuning in wherever it may be from and making us your first listen every day. I'm your host as always, Jacob Rude. A little bit of a a shorter episode to send you off into your weekend, a football-related episode, football-focused episode, I should say, today. And... I want to start with the quarterback battle because we've kind of alluded to it. We know it exists, but I mean, me personally, and I think I speak for uh, a number of people, I don't know how much I really believed it was a quarterback battle, but coming away from the, the, the media availabilities, what Tom Allen is saying, what the coaching staff is saying, they are certainly portraying the idea or putting out the idea that this is very much a quarterback battle, that this is a 50, 50 split, that there is as good of a chance as a Brendan Sorsby starting as there is Taven Jackson. Is that legit? Let's, we can take a look at some of the things the coaching staff said this week. Um, It's a bit different than previous quarterback battles. Last year, Indiana had Jack Tuttle and Connor Bazelak. I don't know what it says about a program that seems like there's repeated quarterback battles in fall camp. There was kind of one with Jack Tuttle and Mike Penix. Uh, Then, I mean, there's been various ones throughout the year. There are, again, Tuttle and Bazelak last year. This one's different because both are coming in at the start at the same time starting point as redshirt freshman Sorsby might have a little bit of an upper hand because he was at IU last season and kind of saw the maybe more familiar with the playbook things like that outside of that though these are two redshirt freshmen same starting point so while they're starting at the same starting point it's an awfully low starting point that being said Tom Allen said this week or excuse me Walt Bell said this week that they're through kind of the ABCs of playing the quarterback position. They're into the DEFs, which you can interpret that however you wish. This is going to be slow. Whoever wins this, there's still going to be kind of those learning moments and those struggles, which is going to make it really important that they stick to whoever, whoever wins this battle. They can't be looking over their shoulder while they're also trying to figure out an offense as a redshirt freshman. So I don't know that Tom Allen will pull the plug. He hasn't really done that until it's been really obvious that it needs to be done. He has remained committed to his guy or whoever wins until uh, he is certain that a change needs to be made. He did it with Bazak last year. I thought he gave Bazak every chance to prove himself and to kind of get back on track. That's been the case time and time again. So I'm not necessarily worried about any situation like that, but it's it's still a situation in which these are two really young quarterbacks. Tom Allen has said that they're taking 50-50 snaps. There hasn't been any anybody taking more snaps than the other. They're still... The two of them are still equals with the ones and the twos, and that's how things are playing out. Now, it sounded like that there was going to be some form of a scrimmage or exhibition game behind closed doors, nothing public, which they've had in previous years. It sounds like there's going to be one on Saturday, and last year Tom Allen talked a lot about that being the first big difference maker. He kind of alluded to it this week as well that they would find out a lot more about these guys during this scrimmage on Saturday. 
that's going to be the first big thing to determine who's going to have the upper hand. And so, again, we're not going to know anything externally until the Ohio State game. Internally, though, I, I think they'll have a better idea, and I wouldn't be surprised if next week somebody starts getting a bit of an edge in the quarterback battle and taking more snaps with the ones. But it certainly seems like this is a legitimate battle. A little surprising. Maybe Taven Jackson didn't come here with any assurances. Maybe this is all a bit of posturing. I'm not ruling that out. Uh, Tom Allen clearly always wants to do as much as he can to remain in secrecy and not let the opponent know what who's going to be the quarterback on week one. He did it last year. He's done it time and time again. And so, especially against Ohio State, where any advantage you can create is going to help, I wouldn't be surprised if we find out the week after the Ohio State game that, yeah, whichever one of the quarterbacks was actually getting 75% of the snaps through fall camp, but we didn't want to tell you guys that. I wouldn't be surprised if we heard that. I'm a little surprised it's kind of a 50-50 battle, but um, it'll be interesting to see how this continues and what we, how it plays out through this weekend into next week and perhaps what we find out afterwards. The good news overall is that there are no injuries right now. And I continue to knock on wood and rub the rabbit's foot. We every dayers will know on yesterday's episode, we talked about uh, both Dexter Williams and Cam Camper being ahead of schedule. That is another piece of IU really having good injury luck during fall camp. And I realize the more I say this, the more I'm jinxing things, but so far Tom Allen says outside of kind of the expected niggles that might keep guys out of practice for a day or two, there's been nothing in the way of injuries. Part of that is because he says right now they're having three days on one day off. They call a regeneration day where he says they watch film. They're in the weight room, but They don't do work on the field to kind of let the body recover a little bit. I haven't heard him mention that before, so I don't know if that's a new change this year, but so far it seems to be working, and I hope it continues to work because IU is due some good injury luck. They have been snake bitten in that regard in recent years, so I hope it stays like this. If it does stay like this, Indiana is going to be really deep in a number of positions, including the running back room which Tom Allen talked about this week as well. We're going to look into the three names he mentioned, how they kind of complement one another, what we could expect this year. We'll do that in a moment. Let's talk about today's sponsor first, though, eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors with eBay Guaranteed Fit. You can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you you shop on eBay Motors. With over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Who's your nation? Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Again, as I always say, thank you to you everydayers that continue to listen. This has been a huge week, already a huge month for us. I'm always blown away by the support, but especially, if I'm being honest, it's football season. And I know we've talked a lot about IU basketball, but for you guys to show this level of support in August, uh, I'm very thankful and it has me excited about uh, what it's going to look like once we get actual sports to talk about, because it's a lot of pro- projection right now. And on that note, the running back room is one of the more intriguing position groups. The Hoosiers are going to have this season. I believe earlier this, um, 
this summer, this off season, we talked about which position group might be the deepest for the Hoosiers. Wide receivers is one I think that you can make an argument for, but on sheer talent, kind of proven talent, there's a really, really strong argument for the running back room. You have an all American and Jalen Lucas, one of the most explosive players in the country in that backfield. And IU certainly is going to figure out ways to use him, but you also have again, someone in Josh Henderson, who I know I've talked about previously and a player who I thought played really well last season, given, especially given the circumstances of how much I use offensive line struggled. He really asserted himself. He, Came in maybe a bit under the radar, uh, but had 400 yards rushing and four touchdowns, 275 yards receiving and four touchdowns. I thought he played really well and and really kind of came into his own at the end of the season and had kind of locked down that uh, running back spot over a Sean Shivers who came in with some expectations last season, I thought. So Henderson played really well and... I think there's a nice little yin and yang kind of combination there. It's not that they're polar opposites and Henderson is a straight, like between the tackles punishing runner and Jalen Lucas is the, the speed guy all over the place. But I think these two can fit well with one another in the backfield. And it's probably why uh, Jalen Lucas kind of revealed during media day that there were going to be more two running back sets because I think these two guys can play with one another. I'm really intrigued as to how Indiana uh, employs things in the backfield, especially if it's Taven Jackson, that's a running threat as well. So you can realistically have uh, Henderson, Taven, Jalen Lucas, and really mix things up, run some options, run some, uh, speed options, some run pass options, some uh, a lot of different things you can do creatively with those three in the backfield. But I, you can do that with Swordsby a bit too, but especially with an athlete like Taven. But somebody else that bears or uh, is worth mentioning is Christian Turner, who transferred in from Wake Forest. This will be his seventh year of college football, three years at Michigan State, three years at Wake Forest, a couple red shirts obviously mixed in there. The COVID year of eligibility means he started his career in 2018 against Michigan and is going to finish his career in 2023 at Indiana. It's actually his sixth year. Uh, the website I have does not have it updated that he played just two years at Wake Forest and now his final year at Indiana. He played for a Michigan team in 2018. They went 10 and three. They were led by Shea Patterson, uh, a lot different team than the one that uh, is going to take the field for Michigan this year. That team was 10 and one going into the Ohio State game and got thumped and then lost to Florida after that. He was on the Michigan team that the Hoosiers beat in the COVID year when things seemed to have completely unraveled for Harbaugh. He left to go to Wake Forest after that and had back-to-back good seasons for Wake Forest. 1,022 yards over the last two seasons, 12 touchdowns. That is another guy who I think can fit into this backfield and get a number of snaps. He had a lot of carries the last two seasons. Trying to do the math quickly in my head. 254 carries the last two seasons for Wake Forest. So this is a guy that's used to getting the ball a fair amount. And while he's going to take a bit of a backseat this season, I don't think he's coming in here expecting to strictly be a third string running back. And he's not going to be Jalen Lucas is going to, I think he's going to see a lot of snaps, but I don't think you necessarily classify him as the first string running back. I just think you classify him as, a starter and you kind of move them all over the field and whatnot. So I use going to need a number of guys, but Tom Allen did speak about how those three can complement one another. He also was complimentary of 
couple other guys that are familiar names to IU fans, Trent Howland. He said this is uh he said he had he has had a great fall camp, the redshirt sophomore. He also said this has been the best camp David Holloman has had since he's been in Indiana. This will be his third uh, fall camp. So two guys that have been around a little bit, both have played well. Indiana tends to go deep with running backs, but that's kind of been because of injury in recent years. If everything goes according to plan, you will probably see a lot of Henderson, Turner, and Jalen Lucas. And I'm excited for that, especially if I use going to get creative and how they use Jalen Lucas and uh, how they use Taven Jackson or Brendan Soresby. There's a lot of very intriguing things you can do with that backfield. And it's because these three guys are really talented and fit well with one another. So that's one of the strengths of this IU team. And look, I went a whole segment talking about the running backs without the caveat of the offensive line. Obviously that factors in here, but if you get adequate offensive line play behind three talented guys like this, you really have something cooking offensively. And that's, I think what makes what is made. I miss watching exciting offensive football. IU hasn't really had that since the COVID season. They've been, hampered by a number of things injuries and poor play all around the field so if they can get back to being a fun explosive offense at the very least that'll be enjoyable whether the results come or not it's going to feel a lot different and I think the vibe will be a lot better around this team because how many times have we gotten into late October early November into the the end of the season and it just feels awful and it feels like it's dragging on and Nobody wants to talk football anymore. I think if you want to change the vibe of the program, this is a really easy way to do it. Not easy. This is a way to do it and really kind of change how the program looks in October and November. I Looking further than October and November, there are some uh, interesting scheduling notes, both for IU and for the Big Ten as well. We'll take a look at both of those and why IU's schedule might be looking a bit different in 2025. We'll do that here in a moment. So the Hoosiers had a three-game series slated with Louisville. That includes the neutral site game this year at Lucas Oil Stadium, a trip to Louisville next year, and was going to include a return trip to Bloomington in 2025. And I say that in past tense, because it came out on Thursday that the Hoosiers and Cardinals are negotiating canceling that 2025 game. Why might Indiana be doing that? Um, There are a number of reasons, I think. Perhaps chief among them is that Indiana is not good enough to be scheduling good non-conference opponents. It's a very kind of brutally honest way of looking at it, but If Indiana wants to make bowl games, they need really crappy non-conference opponents and to be able to beat them. I don't, that's not the only reason they're doing this. I'm sure. I'm sure. I think that's a big reason why they're doing this. I would say it's more than a majority reason of why they're doing this. There was no reason really given and the two sides are working together. It's a mutual thing. So it's not like Indiana's trying to do something illegal and force Louisville's hand and they're working together to, to do this, but it also could technically, if I wanted to get on a tinfoil hat here, maybe Indiana has learned something about big 10 scheduling, especially with what's going to be at least 18 teams in 2025 and I would put a hefty chunk of change. It's going to be at least 20 teams in 2025. If the Big Ten is wanting to move to more conference games, perhaps teams are going to have to start negotiating their way out of some of these contracts or pushing them down the road, something like that. I'm less certain about that because contracts are scheduled out ridiculously far, and it's a lot of contracts that you're going to have to renegotiate. IU has games scheduled out through 
at least 2027, I think into like 2029 and 2030, there's a Notre Dame series in here somewhere that, yeah, 2030, the Hoosiers will play at South Bend. 2031, uh, Notre Dame will come to Indiana. Those aren't real years, so you're not going to have to worry about anything being around by 2030, but uh, schedule the schedules are done so far out in advance that I don't think it's anything to do with the Big Ten. You can put on a tinfoil hat and, and kind of – hypothesize about that though i ultimately think indiana wants easier non-conference foes louisville's good they have jeff brom now they're going to be good i think and indiana wants to get the get out of that and schedule someone bad a ball state a colorado state a yukon those are their three non-con teams in 2026 something like that i don't blame them i mean you the end goal is a bowl game and there's absolutely no need in 2025 for you to play Louisville. That's also going to be the tougher. I will. How do I phrase this? The previous Big Ten schedule, 2025, was going to be tougher than 2024. So it was especially important to have non-conference games you can win in that season. Then now that's. I mean, it's got to change to include Washington and Oregon. So I. I don't know how much it'll change, but based on what we knew, that was going to be a pretty tough season. So it was going to add more emphasis on having easier non-conference games. Uh, There were going to be home games against Iowa, Michigan, Michigan State, and Rutgers. Road games to Illinois, Maryland, Ohio State, Purdue, and USC. That has to change in some regard. But that was how things looked uh, in the Big Ten for the Hoosiers. We'll see who they add how that might change. Who should they be playing? Should it be a ball state? Should it be uh, an FCS school? I don't know if old dominions an FCS school, somebody in the comments can tell me if they are. I would think they might be Indiana state as well. I think one of those teams is probably an FCS school. So you're looking at a crappy FBS school. Who should they be looking at a directional school somewhere? Uh, let put in the comments below who Indiana should be looking to play a Miami of Ohio, a Toledo, a someone like that, an Ohio university, someone nearby that isn't as good. Maybe that's who they look at. One other thing, and I'm hesitant to go too deep into this right now because it's reporting from radio, uh, radio hosts, and I don't ever really consider them, um, reputable i guess to be quite frank but this does kind of make sense which is why i ran with it on the miller and condon show which is a radio show in des moines in iowa they reported that quote the big 10 football championship game will be played at allegiant stadium in las vegas in the near future won't be a permanent move away from indianapolis but at least a couple of vegas title games are coming Why is that believable? Because USC is probably going to be in a lot of those title games. And I guess the benefit of going coast to coast is that you can kind of claim everything in between. Short of getting UNLV, you don't really quote unquote claim Las Vegas as a college team. But if you have USC, you have UCLA, you have potentially other schools in the California area, you've gone about as close as you can to claiming Vegas. So I'm not surprised that they're playing games in Vegas. They can sell a lot of tickets to that game and that would be a big moneymaker. So it makes sense in that regard. I'm honestly a little surprised that the title game hasn't moved out of Indianapolis more. It's probably just tough uh, logistically. There isn't really, I mean, there's Ford Field technically you could go to it'd be i don't know how much they want to go to a soldier field that's going to be cold and whatnot at that time of year i'm not sure i'm just really kind of surprised it stayed in indianapolis as long as it has minnesota as well has a really nice field it's just inconvenient for everybody um so i'm not surprised they're going to las vegas if that report is true if it is 
Should they be going to other places? Should they go to the Rose Bowl? Should they go to SoFi in Los Angeles? Should they be going to more neutral site locations? Or do you think it should stay in Indianapolis? I probably have a little bit of a biased opinion and I assume biased listeners and viewers who think, I mean, I think it it works in Indianapolis. It's a, I was going to say a central location. I guess a central location in the Big Ten now is somewhere in Nebraska or Colorado or something. Go play it at the Mile High Stadium. I don't know if that's a central location now, but it was central enough to most of the Big Ten, and I'm fine with keeping it as that. I wouldn't be against the occasional trip. Maybe once every three or four years, you you branch off to Vegas, to L.A., to I don't so I would I guess Seattle is Big Ten country now. It's so bizarre. I don't know. They're going to do whatever makes them the most money. I mean, it doesn't really matter what we want. They clearly are just doing what makes them the most money. So I have to assume Vegas is giving them a lot of money and it's a profitable trip for them to go to Vegas and and play this game, but not surprised. Where else should they be playing these games at? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you guys, as always, for making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen every single day. Thank you, more importantly, for continuing to support the show as you guys blow me away with constantly every day as we'll be back next week maybe we'll get a better sense of who is the starting quarterback or the leader in that race after this scrimmage next week or this weekend i don't anticipate we will but we'll also continue to cover iu basketball recruiting next week too follow us on twitter if you haven't already subscribe to the show if you haven't already whether on youtube whether on whatever podcast platform you choose. And if you can, leave us a quick rating. It helps us out immensely. Most importantly, though, guys, I hope everybody has a great Friday. Hope you're able to head into the weekend happy and well. As always, though, Elliot.